Bridges, Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, home to the Georgia Bulldogs, where they've had a little chicken, they've had a little drink, and friends, it's time once again to let the big dogs eat. We have a ranked versus unranked battle coming up here, and you know how chaos can ensue if they start smelling an upset. As we'll see a squad from the ACC, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, taking on the number one team in the land, the Georgia Bulldogs. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. The Demon Deacons will kick it away to start us off. And he'll return it and try to get behind his blocker just never had a chance to shake loose and he'll be brought down at the 24. So the Georgia Bulldogs offense will get the first swing of the game. And here he comes just jogging onto the field. But what's going fast, the heart rate of everybody in this crowd, Jesse. Well, this is a special player. All eyes in the stadium on this guy, David. You know the defense. They're going to have to find a way to try to slow this guy down. And he's going to touch it every single play. He'll be the main focal point. Can he handle the pressure? Can he handle the big moments? Can he handle the stage and lead his team in a big moment? They've got it at the 36. It's a first and 10. The receivers often will run their route based on a side adjustment. Dropping back, it's back. Looking left. Makes a connection. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. They've come out with answers on this possession, and now another first down. He's looking to throw it. A strike downfield. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. The Dogs have had a long history of scrappy and efficient quarterbacks. Add a little star power to it, and you've got something working. You definitely get a little extra something, something. We see it all across college football. You find that dude at the quarterback spot, it takes you from good to great, and you've seen that with Georgia over the last several seasons. And the incomplete pass had a lot of juice on it. After the quarterback and receiver failed to hook up, they'll try it again on second down. Using his legs, it's Etienne. And they'll stop him just short of the first down, just inches away from moving the sticks. Aga trying to make this red zone trip pay off. On third and short, trying to impose their will and move the chains. The tackle is made, but he's got him first and goal from the six. This offensive scoring position with a fresh set of downs. They'll run it on first and goal. He works his way all the way down to the three, and the defense is reeling. Now it's second and goal. They've softened them up with a run. Now to throw it. Using the quick game. He's all the way down to the two-yard line. Just spectacular execution there. A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage. And nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. They believe in their running game on third and goal here. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Now on fourth down, here comes the field goal team. And he'll try it from the right hash, and the angle shouldn't be too bad from this distance. It's good. And that'll put the first points of the game on the board. It's 3 to nothing. This is a team that really prides themselves on starting fast. We've seen that before. And here they are playing at home today. Nice job on the opening drop. Lots of poise, good emotion. They don't get the touchdown they would have liked, but they kick a nice field goal. They've got the lead. Head coach has to be happy with them. The Demon Deacons offense headed onto the field. Our first look at them today. 
as we take a look at our impact players for this game. David, what do you look for to make an impact from your leaders? Your leaders not only have to lead the football team, but they got to step up and make plays on the field, keep everybody calm. These guys typically do a really good job. Yeah, David, and they also generally set the tone for their respective football teams. Regardless of which side of the ball they play on, the teammates look towards them to step up in big games like this. The quarterback, quick pass to the receiver. Nifty little dance step. He gets those chains moving, gets it out to the 42-yard line. It's so hard for a defense to have to stop plays like that because it really forces you to play with great eye discipline. You see the pre-snap motion. Defense doesn't know if he's just running across the field and he's going to run a route, if he's going to block, or if he has the football. That time, he was able to outflank the defense and hurt them to get that first down. They're trying to crease them off the left tackle. Just a solid stop by this sophomore. This crowd going to be a long day trying to move the sticks on third down through the air fires and picked off taking it the other way some defensive players just have a name i've played with guys throughout the course of my career that you can't coach it. it's not speed it's not strength it's literally i know when to break up the football how to go get it how to pull it in it's just a name we're ready to get another look at this bulldog offense had to settle for the chip shot field goal last time, Jesse. They'd love for this one to pay off bigger. Yeah, it just comes down to execution, too. Did a nice job out in the field, stalled a little bit once they got down to the goal line, so they just need to be a little bit more crisp here, though. Yeah, and listen, I think the first part was the most important part. you got to put the drive together first to get down there. Now, when we get down there, focus on execution and getting six points. That's what's so scary about this offense. They've got guys in the perimeter that can change the game in one single play, and you saw it right there. Too much speed on the perimeter to create that explosive play. And he takes it in for the score. Touchdown, Georgia! Precision blocking up front. Created the open lane, and the running back followed it beautifully. Yeah, uh, it's pretty easy to follow an offensive line that makes those holes and just gives you a caravan all the way to the end zone. What an unbelievable job blocking up front. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And they thought about a return, then thought better of it. They'll bring it out to the 25. Wake Forest has it back, and here comes the offense. Boy, they hope this next drive is more productive after throwing a pick last time, Jesse. Yeah, and the coaches did a good job on the sideline there, just talking to the young quarterback and making sure he's able to turn the page, calm him down, to go out and refocus this drive. Yeah, and some people do that better than others, but you got to show some trust in him, maybe get the ground game going, help around him a little bit with this system. Grabbed in the backfield, it's green. And they pick up just a few on that completion. You know, the short passing game is a great go-to weapon for any offensive coordinator in the first quarter because it's reliable, obviously, but it also allows you to see how the defense is going to react and play you. So for coordinators, this can really open up the rest of your play. For the rest of the and the Demon Deacons will line up to punt it away. First time we've seen their punt team this afternoon. Looking for a block, it's Evans. Found a little running room on that one. Picked up some nice blocks before he's run out of bounds. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. Jesse, a very productive drive last time wound up with a touchdown. Yeah, mixing and matching play calling really well. Nice balance on that last one, Dave. We'll see what they can do here in this next drive. Yeah. And they couldn't hold off the heat, and he goes down with the sack. Play action pass success has a lot to do with selling that fake. You could tell defense was not buying it, got in the backfield, got the big play. After the big first down sack for the D, it's second down. Back to pass, it's back. Setting up the screen. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. Love the execution there on the screen. The running back shows pass protect, pass protect. Last second turns around, so he's able to get the ball. The D-linemen have already run past him. Now he can turn upfield for a big gainer. Here they come, facing third and long from the 40. Easy. From 
from the gun, wants to pass. Grabbed in the middle, it's Evans. They make the stop, but this passing game does some damage, and they move the sticks with the first down. As they get set to snap it, time winding down here in the quarter. Well, guys, it's Georgia holding the lead at the end of the quarter. Really strong performance so far to be able to build a lead here in the first period as we look at the stats. Now to see if they can answer this early blitz here in the second quarter. They'll break the seal on this quarter here on first down. Let's go! Gonna run it. It's ETN. And how about the efficiency on that one? It'll bring up second and four. I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. The give from the gun. Just ran over it. Slammed to the ground, but not before he gets the first down. It's a good looking run, and I'll say this. I know Georgia's always been known to run the football. They always want to be really physical, but it starts up front. They always seem to have great units on the offensive line. Guys that communicate and guys that get pushed. And they put many running backs into the NFL, but it's because of these big old hog mollies up front. Couldn't find anybody to throw to. He'll just toss it away. It'll be second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. They'll give it to the back. Trying to pound their way forward. He picks up a couple to the 31. And offenses want to continue to feature the run. They want balance. Even if it's not super successful, you can take it a little bit at a time just to keep that defense honest. Unloads to the right. He's got him wide open. And the catch and run into the end zone. Touchdown, dogs! I love this tight end because, man, he's a weapon in the passing game. Big guy, big target, and he has a lot of ability after the catch. You saw it on that touchdown. And with the extra point, they now have a three-possession lead at 17. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. He thought about bringing that out for a half second, but he'll take a knee and they'll bring it to the 25. The Wake Forest offense returns to the field. Trailing down by 17, David, this is an opportunity that they need to answer. And down by 17, it's not panic mode yet. Like, I know we just gave up some points and our defense hasn't played great. I think this offense can still be who they are and stay consistent. No doubt, lots of football to go, but you do get the feeling this is the time of game where, you know, it could get bad. If you don't score and all of a sudden they get the ball back, they take it down the field and put some points up, this thing might be over. So absolutely, this quarterback, he wants to drive this offense down the field and at least put something on They're going to keep this drive going. They'll have to make a play on third and long from the 26. He'll off one deep down the left side. Oh, picked off. Got some room to run. He'll finally go out of bounds, but he was showing off all the skills after that interception. This is obviously not a great start for this quarterback here. Two interceptions already in this game. He's got to do a much better job of this decision. From the gun, the running back has it. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped the really big play. And the Bulldogs have it with a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. Gets it inside the 10, picks up a yard. They'll mark it at the 9. I like the decision there in the RPO game, too, guys. I know he only got a couple of yards, but that play's going to open up bigger opportunities throwing the football down the field in the RPO game, too. So keep handing it off to this guy. Let him see what he can do. And when the defense gives you the look to hold the football and then finally throw it, that's when you take it. And he finds some solid space, makes a nice game before the defense is able to stop him. 
They love to make this short field pay off with a touchdown instead of a field goal. And he takes it to the house. Touchdown, Bulldogs! Another rushing touchdown. That's now two on the game. This offense thought they could come into this one running the ball, being the more physical team, and they look like it right now. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they finish it off with a short plunge into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 25. No attempt at a return. Wake Forest has it back, and here comes the Deacon offense. They just haven't been able to get anything going, and they better get started or it's going to get away from them, David. Yeah, and these are the weeks that you really wish that you were playing a video game, and you could just reset the console, start over, Jesse, and make something better happen early. They just look like they're sleepwalking in this first half, and it's not just one guy. They, they just haven't been playing collectively as a unit. And if I'm the head coach, I'm considering starting to give some other dudes some chances here. Now from the 36-yard line, it's first and 10. To the ground with the back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, there's a statement by the defensive line. First down play, expecting run, and they just dominated up front. Beat their one-on-ones and forced a tackle for a loss. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. I love this linebacker because he's able to dissect what's happening in front of him, and he reacts downhill, uses his speed to get to the line of scrimmage. And he tosses one high and deep down the left side. Man, that's a couple bad throws. Last possession obviously ends in an interception of this quarterback, and now you throw another one you know, in harm's way. you got to make sure you're throwing to the open guy. Make sure you're taking care of that football. We can't have any more turnovers. Slips through the line. They'll put a stop to that return at about the 37-yard line. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. This offense has really been clicking in the game so far, Jesse. No doubt. Everything their play caller is dialing up, these guys offensively have been able to go out and execute, David. Yeah, and it's just maintaining the lead. Keep doing what you've been doing. you got a big lead. Let's just keep piling it on until they find an answer. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. Line gets set, first down. Use the play fake, now to throw. Fires to the middle. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. You see these windows, they're getting smaller and smaller to throw into. Really nice job by the defense that time, getting a hand in there, knocking that ball away. Second and 10 here. Looking downfield, it's Beck. Using the back as a receiver on the screen. And he never had a chance. As soon as he caught it, the defense was right there. Well, the defense sniffed that screen out perfectly. All the D linemen, they were reading the body language of the offensive line. They knew something was up, and when the screen pass got thrown, they were right there to make the tackle. We've reached the two-minute warning, and they will try to build on what has already been a dominant first-half performance. Okay. Let's see what call they have on third and long from the 28. Looking for space, it's Etienne. And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. We got a timeout here late in the first half and they'll try to get more points on the board before the break. Georgia sends out the punt team. Signals for the fair catch and that's where they'll put it in play just outside the 20. The offense set for a first down play. He wants to throw. And the quarterback is knocked down back at the 13. Man, a lot of coaches talk about starting the drive positive and the first play that can get you going. The QB just kept backing up and going backwards, and that is not the start to the drive they were looking for. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks.
third and long, and he'll try to throw for it. And it's picked off for the third time today. Going the other way, and he's got room. Touchdown, Georgia! How about that D coming up with a play like that? Look, I know it's only the second quarter, but we're starting to see a pretty significant gap develop between these two teams right now. No doubt. When your defense is scoring, your offense is scoring, good things happen for your ball club. This defense on point, reading their scouting report, making big plays. They got the late touchdown on the board, now about to kick it away and hoping the defense can keep them from answering. And he'll just take a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Wake Forest has it back, and here comes the offense. So late in the half, this is really an opportunity, David, maybe to swing the momentum in their favor. Dang right. There's no time to be concerned. If we're a little bit down, listen, I just think this is a point with the offense that they can prove. Like, we're here, we're going to create something now that we can build on in the second half. Coach said all week he wanted to be aggressive. This is a great opportunity to show that right now. At the end of the first half, try and generate some momentum, score some points before going into halftime. That completion leaves us with second and medium. Looking downfield, it's Buckmeyer. He's got it down the middle. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. Now they'll line it up from the 44 on first and 10. He's going to pass. He's got the tight end. The offense uses a timeout to stop the clock, and they'll get a quick breather. Trying to convert this second and short. He's looking to throw. Catch in the middle. It's Fields. He is tackled, but it'll be a fresh set of downs. The Demon Deacons will hustle to the line. Going up top on first down. He wants to go deep. And he makes the grab and gets the foot down. What a job for a huge game there. This first half of offense won't go on the highlight reel so far. But starting to get things moving. Looking for the end zone. Just had to get rid of that one. Good job to avoid the loss. They're about to run a dirty half dozen plays on this drive. He wants to throw here on second down. And that's just a flat misfire, not even close to his receiver. Running out of time here in the first half, they're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. On third down, going up top. Couldn't find a man and just had to throw it away to avoid a negative play. So now on fourth down, they'll try to salvage a three and just get points before halftime. It's good, and that was dead solid perfect. That makes the score Georgia 31, Wake Forest 3. That late in the half field goal always gives you a little boost going to the locker room, and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. He'll start the return inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Just enough time to get off one final play of the half. Looking for room, it's ETN. And he's able to get some positive yardage before he's brought down, and that'll bring us to halftime. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Guys, time for everyone inside that stadium in Athens to take a deep breath and kind of digest what we just saw. And we've got to start our halftime breakdown with this superstar running back. His elusiveness, his raw power. This young man is the total package. And his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield is a differentiator. A lot of guys can hit the hole. This kid can hit the hole and hit the home run in the passing game. 
Georgia will kick it deep to start the second half. And they desperately wanted to attempt a return, but decided not to. Instead, they'll take the touchback. The Wake Forest offense returns to the field. Huge deficit to start this third quarter. They just need to find something to build a little confidence. Yeah, it hasn't gone well. Um, when you're trailing by this much, this first drive, man, does everything matter and hinge on this? Because every possession in the second half is going to be critical. Yeah, and I think if you're on offense, why hold back? What are you worried about? Nothing went well in the first half for you. And at this point, trailing by as much as you are, throw caution to the wind, be aggressive, and let's just see what happens. They'll run play action. Gets it out fast. And not much doing there as that defense runs him out of bounds. Trying to move the sticks on third down. They'll try to pick up the first through the air. And the third down pass is incomplete. And the Demon Deacons send out the punt unit. Well, after struggling so much in the first half, you thought they would have made some adjustments here at halftime to see if they can open up this passing game. But early on in the second half, you're just not really able to get that done. Incompletion on third down in your own end. You're expecting them to punt. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. This drive will get started from the 37-yard line. Out of the gun. The running back has it. And the defense finally makes the stop after the sweet run and good game. It'll be a first down from the 49-yard line. Scanning the field, it's back. Unloads it left. He got a hand in there, knocks it away incomplete. Zone coverage that time, and the cornerback, a nice job with his eyes. He's watching the quarterback. He sees the ball thrown, so he knows exactly when to break on it. He's able to break it up for an incompletion. Gets it all the way down to the 39-yard line. It'll be a first down. And the dogs come to the line with a new set of downs. The give to the back. And they picked up nine on first down. It'll bring up second and short. Yeah, this coaching staff, they're getting this offensive line lathered up and into a rhythm. Now they're letting them drive off the ball on first down on these running plays, and they're getting chunks of yardage. Might as well stick with him. The Bulldogs get it past the sticks. Well, this defense is on its heels right now, especially trying to stop the run. They're just not being physical enough. They give up another run right there for a first down. Someone's going to have to step up and make a play. Powers forward, but stopped after a pickup of two to the 24. That's a really good job by the defense, wrapping them up, getting them on the ground, take away that run game, make them one-dimensional, put them in passing situations. Really good job by the defense. Ready up. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Here we go. They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. And the ball's on the ground. And he was able to get back on top of his own fumble. Georgia comes quickly to the line. Black 24. Black 24. On third and short, they'll try to throw for it. And that is a job. The O-line has to protect their quarterback. That's the most important position on the field. You got to make sure you keep him upright. You got to do a better job. No good. And they missed a field goal, so something has gone wrong today. Wake Forest has it back, and here comes the Deacon offense. Boy, three and out last time, Davey. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this drive. Using his legs, it's Claiborne. Cross the 30, out to the 33, and gains four on the play. How bold will they be on third down after that last run? It'll be a draw. Able to fight his way ahead for a pickup of four, but they're still left with a fourth and two. The Demon Deacons will punt this one away. He's getting a lot of work. Fourth time he's punted tonight. 
They'll get down and put a stop to this return. They'll mark it at the 32. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. We talk about settling for points, but sometimes when you have to settle for nothing, David, it can be demoralizing. Yeah, and it can definitely be frustrating. And I think it leads you to say, maybe I go for it more. But, Jesse, I think this offense just needs to put another drive together and just finish strong. Yeah, and, and be a little bit less predictable, too, especially as they get closer and closer down to the end zone. Throwing the comeback looks like such a simple throw, but the timing is so important. And as a quarterback, man, this is all about trusting your guy. You know exactly where he's going to sit it down. You anticipate it. You throw it. You know he's going to come back and make that play for you. And after the incompletion on first down, this offense looking at second down. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, try to convert through the air. Caught over the middle, it's Thomas. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. Great job by the quarterback thrown against zone coverage. You cannot telegraph where you're throwing the football. You cannot eyeball wide receivers. So great job by the quarterback using his eyes, not staring down his guy, and then throwing him up. When you got the ball on their side of the field on fourth and one, you are absolutely going to go for it and be aggressive. Am I right? You are right. You know, some may say the quarterback talks the coach into it, but the quarterback's decision is on third down. If he doesn't get it, fourth down is up to the coach. And listen, every player wants to go for it. The coach always makes the decision. The players always want to go for it. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Easy. Oh. They go to the ground. And he won't quite get there. But boy, after that pickup, just a few inches to go for the first. An array of possibilities here. You have to wonder, after missing a field goal on the last drive, how are they going to play this third down? They'll try to pick it up on the ground. He's got enough for the first down. They'll spot him at the 24-yard line. I don't need it to be pretty. I just need my inches. Third down and inches. Nice job by getting the first down. Always fall forward. Play physical. Don't get east and west. Stay north and south. Nice job by the running back. Ready up. The dogs will have it first and 10. Include. Leaves it with the running back. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And sometimes for the defense, it just takes one play, right, to create some momentum. Obviously, this guy's been eating him up. He's got over 100 yards rushing on the day. But finally, David, they get something positive here in the run game defensively. But you kind of know that coming in. He's going to get his. Such a great back, and he's had a great day. Need to put more plays together like that right there. This offense has a second down play. They try to pop a run on the draw. They make the stop, but there is a flag on the field. We'll see what that's all about. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Up and, up and. They say you could call holding on every play. Well, they did on that one. Well, guys, it's Georgia holding the lead at the end of the quarter. Well, guys, so far, this has been a massive beatdown, and it would appear the biggest challenge is what kind of records can they set as we have a look at the third quarter stats. So will the beatdown continue, or is this a comeback for the ages in store? We'll see as we start the fourth. Offense gets set for second down. Get set, get set. Go. Give to the running back. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. Well, there weren't a lot of guys in the box defensively on that second and long play, so you see the offensive line. They're able to get downfield, get a hat on a hat, and that helped lead to that successful play. Quarterback checking off. On third down, he drops to throw. Right on the money to the outside. He dragged the toe, and how about the ball placement? Only the receiver could get it. 
Well, it really just feels like they are trying to make a statement to everybody in college football. They've got a lead, they've got it late, and they are still putting it on this defense. They are still letting it fly. They're airing it out, trying to light up the scoreboard. And the defense makes the tackle, but not before. He gets down to the two. And how good does that feel, right? You've got the lead in the fourth quarter. The defense knows you're going to try to run the ball to ice the game, and you rip off an eight-yard run. They know it's coming, and they still can't stop. Trying to get in the end zone again. Touchdown, Dogs! And the stomping has commenced. Points, points, and more points. This offense has had their way. They just keep their foot on the gas, keep putting up points, keep putting up touchdowns. And you know what? This is one of those stats days. You look back and you're like, that guy had 12 touchdowns on the year. Well, four or five of them might have been in this game. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And no chance at a return here. They'll start this drive at their own 25. Wake Forest has it back, and here comes the offense. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. They just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Can't make the connection in the defense, putting on the heat and forcing the incompletion. Ball sitting right at the 30. It'll be third and short. Looking to throw, it's Bachmeyer. Throws for the tight end. He makes a catch. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Looking to throw it again. Nice defensive play to get a hand in there and knock it away. And here comes the offense on second down. He's looking to throw. Grabbed over the middle. It's Claiborne. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. Throws to the wideout. Can't make the connection on third down thanks to that tough, hard-nosed pass defense, and now it's fourth down. And the Demon Deacons will send out the punt unit. A fairly short distance here toward the sidelines, not his best work. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. How about the way they attacked the last time they had the ball, mixing run and pass and winding up in the end zone, Jesse? That's why recruiting is so important. They've got weapons at every skill position on the field. Any of these guys is dangerous if they touch the football. Let's see what they do on this drive, David. And so, Palmer, I got to take away something. I can't let them have everything and have success. I got to be aggressive against the run or play for the pass. I can't give them everything. They opened the lane, and he hit it a gain of five out to the 33. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles, and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. They'll run it to keep this clock grinding. They push it out to the 39 after picking up five. This guy's been special today. Coming into this one, they thought they had an opportunity really to get him going, running the football, and he has delivered. You've seen the speed, the vision, his ability to break tackles. Well over 100 rushing yards in this game, and that's why they have a nice lead here late. And how about the work up front by that big defensive line? you got to have that defense you know you can go to in running situations. Your base defense where you say, okay, this is where I'm going to start, and I'm going to stop the run, stuff it up front. My guys play big up front. And then if I need to add some blitzes to it later on down the road, I can. But great job in the base defense of making a play. From the gun, he leaves it with the back. They'll give him a couple. That leaves him with third and eight. 
You know, as a defense, you kind of want to force the give on the RPO. You want them to run the football, and you can tell maybe the quarterback wishes he pulled this. Small gain, but some information you gathered maybe for the next time you get to run an RPO. It's third down now, and they ought to be able to get off one more play before the two-minute warning. We've reached the two-minute warning, and this offense will be quite content just to drain the rest of the time away. Ball is at the 41 as this defense tries to force the punt on third and long. To the air, it's back. Looking to the big tight end. That is just a sideline play. Roll, catch, toe drag, everything you want. You know, I love offensive coordinators that want to stay aggressive. They've come up with big plays all game long. It's a big reason why they have this lead right now. And they're not backing off here in the fourth quarter. They're letting their guys go play. The entire playbook is open to them, and they're taking shots. And he does a really nice job finding open space and making a good game before the stop is made. Eight-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and short. Leaves it with the back. And he's almost to that first down marker there, saying he's a little bit short. They might want to bring out the sticks and measure, but it looks as if he'll be just short of the first down. Here comes third and short from the 27. This defense trying to make them settle for a field goal. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, the defense finally able to make a play, getting a tackle for loss. They haven't had many of those today because this running back really has answered the bell. They knew coming in they were going to have to give him the football, force feed it to him, and let him go to work. He's done that. Well over 100 yards rushing in this game. The defense just has not had the answers consistently for him. Fourth down and short. He won a no-nonsense run. Nice job by the running back getting the football getting downhill, making sure he gets that first down. Their work here is virtually done. No need to take any more chances. They'll line up in victory formation. Looks like the offense will just take a knee. They've got a solid drive working, but now looking at second and 11. When you know you have a team out of class, the ability to play to that standard and finish with a blowout like this is really impressive. And it's almost like playing against yourself, right? You know you're better. You know you're going to win the football game. But how do I continue to still execute? This, this was so easy. Great execution. Uh, just beat down in every facet. I think as a player, you just love being in such great rhythm. And we saw that right from the get-go in this game. Offense just able to matriculate the ball down the field. Defense was not giving anything up. What a great game plan coming in. And this was just total domination. That's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, our entire broadcast team, I'm Reese Davis. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.